Secretary Blinken and I discussed all these issues yesterday during his trip to Munich. I began by asking him about that high stakes meeting with China's top diplomat. We had a very direct, uh, very clear conversation about the Chinese surveillance balloon being sent over our territory in violation of our sovereignty, in violation of international law. Uh, I told uh, Wang Yi, my Chinese counterpart, that that action was unacceptable and must never happen again. Uh, we also had an opportunity to talk about the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We're here in Munich, and many of the countries here are focused, as we are, on that aggression. And one of the things that I shared with him was uh, a growing concern on our part uh, that China is considering providing lethal support to Russia in its aggression against Ukraine. And I made clear, as President Biden has, uh, almost from day one with President Xi, uh, that that would have serious consequences in our own relationship. Finally, um, it was important for me to underscore the importance of having open lines of communication uh, between us in continuing to engage in uh, direct diplomacy. Um, we have a responsibility to manage the relationship responsibly. I think the world expects that of us. It's also in our interest. And so that's also something that I underscored in the meeting with Wang Yi this evening. And I will say that Wang Yi has said of the Chinese spy balloon, the whole shoot down incident, that it was absurd and hysterical and said Cold War mentality is back. Is that the message you got from him? I don't want to characterize uh, what he said to me, Martha, but um, I, I think here in, in Munich, too, uh, what we know is we are not the only ones on the receiving end of the Chinese spy balloons. Uh, more than 40 countries have had these balloons go over their territory, and this goes back um, some years. This program's been, been around for a few years. Uh, so there's a real concern that I'm hearing here from other countries, from allies and partners alike, uh, about this program. And I think countries are, uh, I was going to say pleased, but pleased is the wrong word. They appreciate the fact that we've exposed it. I will assume you got no apology. Um, again, don't want to characterize what he said, but you're, you're correct. And, and you talk about this lethal aid. What evidence do you have of that? What makes you think they're about to send lethal aid to the Russians for the war in Ukraine? Uh, Martha, what I can tell you is this. Um, first of all, from day one, almost quite literally, because President Biden spoke to President Xi a couple of weeks into the Russian aggression uh, back uh, last March and said to him that um, it would be a deep concern to us if China provided lethal support to, um, to Russia or helped in the systematic evasion of sanctions. And part of the reason for that conversation going back to last March was just a few weeks before, President Putin and President Xi had met and they talked about a partnership with no limits. And we were very concerned that no limits might include significant support to Russia in its aggression. Uh, we've been watching this very, very closely. And for the most part, China has been engaged in providing rhetorical, political, diplomatic support to Russia. but. We have information that gives us concern that they are considering providing lethal support to Russia in, uh, in the war against Ukraine. And it was important for me to share very clearly with, with Wang Yi uh, that this would be a serious problem. And, and Mr. Secretary, I want to go back to the Chinese spy balloon. Some U.S. officials believe it's possible that Chinese didn't intend for the spy balloon to go to the United States, to, to cross the United States. Do you believe that was their intent originally? Martha, I can't speak to their original intent. What I can tell you is this. Once over the United States, uh, the balloon attempted to surveil uh, very critical, important military installations. We protected the sensitive information that it was trying to surveil. Uh, we, at the same time, got information about the balloon itself as it was traversing the country going west to east. And then when it was safe to do so, there was no danger to people on the ground, uh, President Biden ordered that it be shot down. Okay, there were, of course, those three other balloons. I, I know President Biden mm -hmm. has said he wants to keep America safe, but how can Americans feel safe if we have the most sophisticated weaponry in the world and surveillance, and we thought those three balloons were a threat, not just weather or recreational balloons? Martha, here's what's happened. Um, when we began to track the... Um, the Chinese surveillance balloon. One of the things that we did was to recalibrate our radars and other systems that were looking up in the sky. And as a result, we began to see things that in years past, we simply weren't looking for or, or looking at, um, including the objects that were subsequently shot down. And the difference between 
the Chinese surveillance balloon and the objects that were shot down afterward is that the, the Chinese surveillance balloon was flying at about 60,000 feet, did not pose a threat to commercial aviation. The other objects were flying lower, and when we saw them, and, and within the band that commercial planes might fly in. So the president um, made a determination that they posed a threat to commercial aviation, and the prudent thing to do was to shoot them down. I want to ask you finally about the war in Ukraine. Of course, it's the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion. I'm talking to Senator Lindsey Graham in a moment, who has advocated for sending fighter jets, long-range missiles, whatever Ukraine needs. You've also got the former NATO commander, James Stavridis, saying Putin is all in and we should be as well. Why not give them what they say they need to win this war? Martha, at every step along the way, um, even going back to before the Russian aggression, we have been providing Ukrainians with what we believe they need to defend themselves and now to take back territory that was seized by force. If you go back before the aggression started, when we saw the storm clouds uh, rising. Um, but they say quietly, they need fighter we, jets. They say they need fighter jets. They say so, they need speed. They say they need uh, longer range missiles. So you say you, you're sending them what you think, not what they think they need. No, we're in very close collaboration and coordination with the Ukrainians precisely on this question of what do they need at any given time. But what's very important is this. Uh, what we should not do, any of us, is to focus or get fixated on any particular weapon system because the weapon system itself, as important as it is, is not, uh, is not sufficient. Um, you have to make sure that um, Ukrainians are trained on the systems that are being provided. You have to make sure that they can maintain them. If they're not trained on them, they can't use them. If they don't know how to maintain them and they fall apart within a week, it's not going to do you a lot of good. And you also have to make sure that they're using all of these things in a comprehensive uh, way that um, can be effective uh, on the battlefield. That's been what we've been doing all along. We're also looking at m the, the next months because what's going on now is this. The Russians are engaged right now in an offensive uh, along the eastern lines, trying to push through the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are holding very strong. The Russians are suffering horrific losses in this effort. Ukraine's also preparing for a, a, a counteroffensive in the spring. And the focus has to be on what will they be able to use and use effectively over the next few months, not the next few years, to um, make uh, the greatest gain possible against the Russian aggression. Okay, thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Secretary. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Good to be with you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.